Hello, my name is Evan Arnold, and this is my self-identity presentation. So a little bit on this slide is my self-introduction. There's a picture of me on the right. My name is Evan Arnold, as I previously stated. My pronouns are she, they. I am 19 years old, and my major is ASL interpretation. And the culture of focus I will be focusing on is queer culture. So a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which you can see on the picture is on the southwest side. Um, I grew up in a very accepting household. I'm the only child. I have two parents, so my mom and my dad. Uh, from a very young age, I found a passion for equality and human rights. So that included being able to love who you want to love and just like the right to live like a normal, happy life that is accepting. And then my sophomore year of high school, I came out as bisexual. So why queer culture? I was surrounded by the queer community from a young age. I started going to pride events with my mom and her work when I was about 10 or so, and I would help there. Uh, we had someone live with us who was gay, I love him. His name is Calvin. I, especially after I came out, I found a lot of support and acceptance from within the queer community, which was a time that was a little confusing for me, a little scary. And I have found that queer culture is an important component of my own self-identity because I believe in the right to love who you want to love and be able to do that freely. So some of the visible aspects of queer culture are obviously pride festivals, rainbow flags and pins, drag queens and kings, pride month and queer art and artists. So describing some of the pictures, there's a pin that says love is love, which is a typical slogan that explains that any type of love should be valid and accepted. Uh, the picture to the right of it is a picture from a pride festival back home in Grand Rapids. We have a pride festival every single year during pride month. And I love being able to go there and celebrate. It's really nice to feel accepted by members of my community. And then this bottom picture is a picture of the artist Keith Haring. I'm sure many people have recognized and seen his art. They may not know who he is, but he was a very famous queer artist who unfortunately passed away from AIDS, but he used his art to kind of advocate for AIDS and AIDS visibility, as well as just show his own creativity and passion. Some of the invisible aspects of queer culture is the idea of coming out, which is basically identifying yourself to be queer or LGBTQ plus or whatever you identify as. So I have a picture on the left that is also by Keith Haring and it's kind of like coming out of the closet, so to speak, which is a very common a common term within this community. Um, another thing is self-acceptance. So because queer, the typical definition has been um, something that is not the norm and whether you are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, anything. It isn't like the typical heteronormative state that is prevalent within our society. So it takes a lot for you to be able to understand this and really be comfortable with who you are. And then the third one is queer safe spaces. So a lot of areas, like it's good to know that you can feel safe and comfortable being who you are because this is not always the case, unfortunately, in some areas. So some other parts of my identity that are very important to me is that I have been an athlete for my entire life. I primarily do swim now. I'm on the RIT swim team. Another thing is I am Gen Z, which is a huge part of my identity because it falls into like my social interactions and typical things that I go about. So like my generation is very online and we have been found to be like more diverse, more accepting than previous generations, such as um, 
like the baby boomers. Another thing I mentioned earlier is that I'm an only child, so I don't have any siblings. It's just me, which has some pros and cons, obviously, but this was a very important part of who I am because I find that I identify well with other people who both have siblings, don't have siblings, but there's some parts of my life, like I recognize that I have more opportunities than other people who may have more siblings. Another thing that I find is very important to me is that I am a feminist. I relate very deeply with feminism and that movement because I myself identify as a woman. And I think it is incredibly important to advocate for the rights and um, like equality of women of every gender, sexuality, race, everything. So I believe that is a very important part of who I am as a person. So how do these parts of my identity intertwine? I find, as I mentioned earlier, the community. So by being someone who is queer, I identify a lot with people who are in the queer community, but also, for example, my swim community. I find them to be very important parts of who I am, and I find myself identifying well with people who are involved in those communities, whether they're not even just on my team or in my uh, city. So it's a very important part of who I am and who I get along with. Uh, acceptance, especially because of, you know, feminism and uh, the queer community, I find myself very open-minded. So I find it like it's easier for me to get along with people who may not be the same that I am. Uh, diversity, especially due to athletics and the queer community, there is a variety of genders, um, communities, people, where they're from. So I find that diversity is really important because it's really opened my mind and allowed me to work with others in a way that is culturally uh, accepting and inclusive. And then going on to that is inclusivity because I understand how it feels to be feel a little bit on the outside. So I think it's very important for me to bring others in. And then I feel very included because I have had the opportunity to be so involved in these cultures and cultural communities that I identify with. So that is all for my presentation. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to read and respond to some of your comments.